<laughs> who's the hardest? <laughs> Yeah, as you know, who's the hardest? We got Randy today. Well, I got my bro, bro. What's going on, G? Bro, I'm not even gonna lie. Right now, today is a pleasure to be in your presence, my bro. I'm yes. not even gonna lie. It's a Respect, pleasure to bro. be in your, your presence. You get me? Car, obviously coming up, listening to you lot, your team, mm. the way you lot push, the way you lot open the door for UK mm. rap music and them thing. Now, obviously, you lot weren't really hip hop. Mm. You was kind of versatile, but yeah. you lot opened the door for man. You made it yeah. possible for it to be the way it is now mm. in the music game, you get me? Yeah. Well, funny you said we weren't, like, we started off very hip-hop. Like, you get me? When we first started, um, we were a rap group, innit? So me, um, my brother J-Rock, and my big brother um, Debo, we were a group. We just made rap, like, gangster rap, if you like, yeah? And then we then got into the situation with the with the girls in our group where they would make um, they would make songs and then we would do the raps on it and we would kind of blend each other together and then then our producer just then he went crazy and started doing some innovative stuff like with like the new flow because we didn't want to sound like everyone else like he get me so that's when we kind of went in a different direction but before that we was doing just regular hip-hop like you get me and if you listen to the the bars on like our first singles and that like they're not pop bars like you get me like we're yeah, talking know, about switching you, chicks and you're talk, things. i noticed that because i was going to touch on that i noticed you mm. lot were talking about gucci benz's mm. diamond ring yeah. before gucci was like readily available, yes, do you know what I mean? Yes. It wasn't like that back then, for people yeah. that know. Back then, the person, the, it wasn't the majority when yeah. um, Gucci or Versace was the minority. Yeah, so it when was you... aspirational, like, you get me? Mm. Th back then, like, we just wanted to be different, you know? Um, and because at the time when we launched anyway, there was only one other, I would say, black group that was out at that time, and that was so solid. And they had like the streets locked, right? So we couldn't do another version of Soul Solid. Yeah, so they we had, had their do... avenue. They had their yeah, they had the the avenue. They had the streets like kind of locked down. So we couldn't do another version of that. So we had to think, how can we stand out? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, big how up, can mega we be different. Them. Of course, of big course, they're mega. my brothers. Like, but um, we couldn't do them. Like, you get me? They had to do that thing, and we had to do something different. So that's when we started thinking. How can we be different in the game? So that's when we started with the R and B and the hip hop together. Mm. Like he get me because that was different. Like and we wasn't garage. We wasn't on that scene, so we couldn't do that. So we had to do like hip hop and just make it a little bit different. Um, so that's when when they started coming up with different kind of beats. Like the new flow beat is different. Like if you if you played it now, like you would not hear anything like it's it. It's got like a poppy vibe to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 not even pop because I can't even hear anything like it now. Like but it's just had a like a bop to it. And then we just decided to 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 mess with it and do something with it. Like right right now if like uh, most artists that are out, if they you played that beat to them, they probably wouldn't want to touch it. Like you get me because mm. It doesn't fit into what everyone is doing, mm. um, and so we kind of we kind of like that idea of not fitting in. Like he get me outcast kind of kind of vibe, and we went for it, and I think it done it done really well, man. So where did the um the name stem from, Big Brother? It came from our first um, CD that we released. Um, so how we started was um, we were a collective of artists, yeah. So like I said, me. J Rock and my big brother Debo, we were all in one group together called Out for Justice. And you, you guys all from Brixton as well, the same Brixton. neighborhood. Yeah, we were all from Brixton. Um, J Rock was from Broccoli, but we were all basically from the South London area, so Brixton. And then um, all of the girls were individuals. Um, and then we had another guy called Flawless, and he was in the in the Big Brother collective as well. Because what Big Brothers was at the beginning. It was a, a collective of um, artists, right? Um, the guy that put it together, his name is Skills. He was the producer. And he used to make um, some CDs back in the day called um, uh, Big Brothers Watching You, yeah? Okay. And the CD was called Big Brothers Watching You because basically he's saying that we're watching the streets and seeing what's, what's happening and we're taking all the talent and putting them together. 
Um, and he used to do a, a, a CD called the Mega Mix, Breakdown Mega Mix here, when he used to mix our songs in with American artists and and songs that, and stuff like that. And he used to sell really well, like in the underground circuit, it sold really well. Um, like everyone was, like when they were driving, they would have it in their car and that. So he made this Big Brothers Watching You CD and um, it sold like 2,000 copies in the first week. Like they don't sound like a lot, but... What was that it, like? Out of the boot. That's out of like CD bars. I don't know if they still got CD bars, but in like in the markets, they would have like a, a, a thing called a CD bar where they would just sell CDs and stuff like. So it was like a our own little bootleg kind of thing. Yeah, but and just go leave, get an invoice from yeah, them. Yeah, two thousand copies in the first week. That was like unheard of. Like mm. you get me. So it did really well. When we did that, it it caught the ear of some record execs, and they were like, "Yeah, this this sounds like something that we could do something with. What 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 are we gonna do?" But there's too much of them. That's what they said at the time. There's too many of them. We need to get the numbers down to a, a number that is um, doable. Yeah. Right. So then they 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 then said, "How can we make this work?" So then um, my brother went to sit down for a little while. Unfortunately, so. He couldn't be in it, so we brought Flawless um, into the band, and then we had we just chose three of the girls, the three of the best singers out of the band, to be in the group as well. And then we called it Big Brothers because that was the name of the CD that we were we were f discovered from. Okay. Like you get me, it's called Big Brothers Watching You. So um, that's how we got the name, and that's how we kind of got together in the beginning. Um, and then yeah, the rest is just. The, yeah, music history, that like, you get me. Ah, that's a big look. So, like, what kind of famous people was you rubbing shoulders with, like, like when you was coming up in the game? At that time, we didn't really, because we was our own little unit, but we used to run into everyone. We used to run into the Robbie Williams, the... the um, we, we, we did this award show in uh, Europe, um, and we saw... Uh, Mariah Carey, Usher, all of the all of the artists, like everyone that you can think of, Fifty Cent, all of them. We we run into everyone basically on our journey. Um, but one of the one of the most memorable moments was we did party in the park one time, and that was like a hundred and something thousand people in the park. We met the prince, who's the king now, Prince Charles. We met him, and we met Beyonce. And Beyonce, because she was on the same label as us, she probably got to hear our music and that. She was like to the girls, oh, y'all can really sing. I heard y'all. And I was like, what? Oh, what, Beyonce actually had a conversation with yeah, you guys, Beyonce yeah? Yeah, Beyonce had conversation. Like, she knew who, she was aware of us. Like, Sweet. you get me? So it, that was a bit like, whoa, right? Beyonce, like, you get me? Even back then, she was still like... Yeah, she was still big. She was still a Beyonce was even just, then, like, mm. you get me? But... I think that's when she started going solo on her own um, for the first time with Survivor and songs like that. Okay. So she was at Party in the Park as well, but we were label mates, innit? So she would have heard some of our stuff maybe mm. around the office and that. So that was like one of the biggest, like... Moments. That was the biggest artist that we've ever, like, had conversations with and stuff. But we, we basically met everyone. So it, it was good, man. That's dope. So you see, like... Obviously, with your music, I'm sure it still gets spun today. How does it work with, like, royalties and stuff like that for people that don't understand? Like, do you, well, are you still seeing checks off the back of what you've done back then? Yes, so um, we, still get, we still get checks and stuff, but the way our deal was structured, it wasn't a good deal. And, mm, and that's usually and like, the case, like, back then. A lot yeah, of things then, have changed now because you could be your own record label now, yeah. do you know what I mean? See, that's why... Some things back then was better and some things right now is better because back then um, when you was a when you made it, like you proper made it, innit? Because people were invested in you, so it wasn't like a streaming service where they could just easily stream your music. They had to actually say, Right, I like Big Brothers, I'm gonna go into town and I'm gonna go and buy their their record. Like, yeah, you get it was me? a so physical thing. They yeah. had to make a commitment to go and buy the the, the physical music, right? Mm. So that was more of a commitment from the the people. But then also the record labels were unscrupulous back then. They didn't. They weren't giving out great deals. And the thing about us is, we um we made a lot of mistakes. Like you get me as a group, we made a lot of mistakes. One of the one of the first mistakes we made, we had two deals on the table for us, right? 
one deal. One deal kept us um, more independent and it would give us um, more percentage of our music, but less of a money up front. And one was like the deal that we went for, which was more money up front, bigger label, and we lose some of our independence, yeah? And where I come from, right, I, I wasn't used to like um, being successful or anything like that. We, we would do anything just to, to um, get out of the neighborhood that we were okay, in, like, you yeah. get me? The environments weren't the best. Like, you weren't you looking me? at the small print. Yeah, we, we, we weren't looking at the details. And the thing is, my brother, who who went away? He was like the one that would, if he was there, he would have he would have said, "Nah, this is dumb. Like, why are we doing this?" Like, but he weren't there in it. So, our, like, a common sense person left the situation. Like, he get me, and then we were all there, just like, let's get some money, man. Let's try and get some money and give some money to our family. Woo woo woo. Yeah. So we just went for the 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 big money up front one, which was dumb. Like now I know that's dumb, but. Then it didn't seem dumb. Then it seemed like the right move. Like you get me. So you feel like the other deal would have paid better for like the marathon for the longevity. Right. The other one was a marathon. This one was the sprint the, the, money. Yeah, the sprint. Yeah. The sprint money. This was the Usain Bolt money. Like get mm. me quick. Like get me some hundred grand. Give me that. Like, they were talking about. Oh, we give you a hundred grand now each. Like bang, bang, bang. Like and we're like what? I've never seen money like this. I'm from like Brixton, like you get me. I never mm. seen money like this. And they're talking crazy money. And they're talking, yeah, you're gonna be on Sony Records, the biggest label in the world. Da 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 da. The other label was saying, we're not gonna give you any money up front. First of all, we're not giving you anything. We will give you like little change and that, but we're not giving you money. But we'll give you more percentage of your music. Like, and now, now to me, that sounds like sensible. Like, mm. but then. I was like, nah, this is crazy. You don't know even trying. Like, you get me? You don't know even try to get mm. us. Like, you get me? So it was like a no-brainer to go for that deal at the time. But really, that was a dumb deal. Like, you get me? Now I see it like a dumb deal. Like, you get me? But we did what we did in it. And I don't yeah. have no regrets because at the end of the day, it's not about money. It's about, like, some of the memories that we the got. Memories, you can't, the moment, 100%. You can't really rewrite that. And who knows? Maybe we would have went with that label and it would have flopped. Like, you get me? Because the late the songs that they were going to put out first as well wasn't the... The ones that you lot dropped. Yeah, it wasn't the, in the same order. So they were going to put out OK first mm -hmm. as our lead single. They were going to rework New Flow and do it in a different way. And they were just going to do it differently, right? More urban, more like... Um, less pop, right? Mm. So who knows? Maybe that would have worked better. Maybe it may not have. Maybe not, right? So, um... We decided to go for the Sony deal, but like, like now, now looking back, we can easily say that that was the wrong decision. But who's to say? Like, you get me. It might have been the right one, might have been the wrong one. Who knows? Like, yeah, no, I hear that. So, I like the fact that you don't regret nothing in the mm -mm. past. So, is that the same feeling? Like, you guys as a group, would there ever be like talks of a reunion or you guys doing shows? Do you, do you guys still perform even? We still perform, four of us, um, J-Rock, myself, um, Sharice and Nadia, we still perform as a, as a group um, because you know, Sharice and Nadia, you know they went and they did some um, dance music thing. They had Booty Love, a group called Booty Love as well. Mm. And they released songs like Boogie Tonight and a few other songs and they did really well, right? Um, so right now what we're doing is we're, we're touring as Big Brothers and Booty Love. So we're doing songs from them, songs from Big Brothers and some of the songs that we've got as well because me and Rock, we had um, a group called Party Dark, um, so we do some of them songs as well. Okay. Uh, it's a really good show, um, but yeah, so we're, we're doing that at the moment um, and touring the country and we got some shows abroad and we went to Australia recently with it as well, so it still gets us around the world and it still gets us living our dream, like you get me, and a lot of people don't realise that 21 years later, we're still doing it. <laughs> you get That's me? a it's big not, deal. That's 21 years is not like, it's not nothing to sneeze at, like, you get me? If you get 21 years doing anything, you done all right, like, you get me? And then people are still singing Baby Boy, they still love that song, 
And, like, even Stormzy covered Baby Boy in one of his recent records, Rachel's Little Brother or something yeah, like that. Yeah, big up Stormzy, man. Big up Storms, man, yeah, because he... And he was talking about it, and basically his big sister used to play him Big Brother songs and stuff like that. Um, so it kind of it kind of resonates with now as well as back then. then this is I don't even want to interrupt you. Yeah, mm. this is what I was trying to to, to explain to you earlier. That like, I didn't want you to feel like I was stroking your ego or mm. overgassing you or anything, mm. bro. Like you've paved the way for UK hip hop in a way that not much artists have. Mm. So solid. They they done a lot for the for the scene. You get yeah, me, but yeah, you yeah. guys you guys made TV the big screen. I remember mm. like growing up and seeing you lot on the big screen rapping. Mm. I'm saying nah, mm. I right, won't do it's that. Mad, you get me? How bro. did you lot do that? Blood, do you understand? You lot had the cheat code back then, bro. Mm. And I just want to commend you for that. You get yeah. me, bro. And, and I, I just want you to know that you're appreciated by a lot of real brothers out yeah. here that still make music and still got passion for the music. You get me, yeah. bro. And you know what, it's, it's a bit mad, yeah, because, like, obviously, I know, like, coming from where I'm from, yeah, like, some of the things that we had to do, like, like the, the kids' TV shows and stuff like that, it's not, it's not hard, is it? It's not, it's not G, right? But I know that there's people that would have watched that, young kids that would have watched that and said, you know what, like, we can, we don't have to, Dude, we don't road. have to it was, do road. It was, it was like, you know, I mean? I'm telling you, it was inspirational, mm. bro. You gave the man them hope. Like, yeah. bro, we could get on the screen. Yeah. Man can rap if you try. Yeah. And and it, it doesn't have to be, like, road music to do it. Even though everyone now is, like, street. Like, I, I don't know if there's an artist, a black artist out there that is not street artist. Like, you get me? They're all gangsters now or some version of a gangster. There's not really right? no clean cut image there's artist. Not, there's not really and because it doesn't sell now so the labels don't they're not interested in it. But we like when we came we never we never had on hoodies and like on the corners like our videos as well. They were never like in our environment. There was mm. always like we're putting on a big show. Like you get me and it was different like and I don't see a lot of difference now like in in the way the music industry is going and um that is not great like for for us but i guess that's the way things are now everyone is like a, a different version of this gangster guy that is out there but mm. i don't know how much gangster is really in it but everyone is definitely a version of this gangster that's out there at the moment but um and good luck to them because they're making money like more independence, they've got more control of their music than 100%. we ever had. It's really changed. Like, do you know what I mean? And and I'm happy for all of them because I just wish that we had the chance to be as independent um, with our music because um, Big Brothers as a group, we've got a lot of talent in the group, a lot of talent um, with the girls, with us, etc. There's a lot of talent in the group and I just think... Um, with with time, with time, it would have it would have it would have made sense, basically. Yeah. No, I get you, man. Mm. Um, you see, like with with this podcast, I like to like send out a positive message at the right. end of every interview. You get me? So I just mm. like to ask you if there anything, any like cheat codes or tips you would give to the younger lot coming up, whether it be the younger guys, the younger girls out mm. there, to like something positive, a positive positive message for them to just you know. Um, all I would say is um, be yourself, right? Um, because you, who you are is a is a unique is a unique person. The way you get in trouble or you get caught up is when you try to be like everyone else. There's there's a lane for everyone, like do you know what I mean? So um, whether that be um, not music and you're doing something else, like. And whatever your passion is, like go for that because it will it will bear fruit. Like if it's the right thing for you, it will bear fruit. Like you get me. So a lot of a lot of times people just try and um, fit in and do what everyone else is doing. And um, my advice would always be to try and stand out from what makes you different from everyone else. Like you get me. So yeah, that's that's my only advice is to try and stand out and be yourself. Like don't follow. Yeah, no, I hear that, Randy, man. I appreciate mm. you coming through, man. Yeah, and, respect. You know, bro. like I said, it's good seeing you and 
You're mm. welcome here anytime, my bro. Yeah, you get man. me, and we're gonna let's shut go. it down now with the freestyle. Okay, my let's brother. go, bro. Come on, my brother. Love, let's yeah. Go. Who's the hardest?